Hi guys. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm a, I was about to start the uh, Suzuka uh, deep dive, and um, and I've been thinking about it a lot over the last day or so. And I I don't think there's any question that um, the turn one specifically and in general um, sector one will give a lot of people uh, trouble, particularly the newer you are at sim racing. Um, and there's a there's a really good reason for that, um, and it's something that I want to get into because I think understanding this concept will largely determine what it is you're attempting to do through sector one um, for this weekend uh, in the race. Uh, the problem is that this concept does not apply only to Suzuka. It's extremely important for Suzuka um, and also for another track like Silverstone, you know. Um, but um, and every track will have examples of where this uh, concept is critical. But um, uh, but Suzuka is important. Silverstone's important. Uh, there's just a lot of places where this is going to apply. So I decided to talk about this in a um, in a separate video, so that we can reuse it for you know other tracks when it comes up. Uh, otherwise, I'm afraid it'll it'll just get lost in the deep dive itself. So. Um, so what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about aerodynamic balance, um, what it means and why you should give a damn about it, right? And I'm going to start by saying that, um, that look, in every race car, uh, but particularly GT3 cars, um, you have basically two types of grip, mechanical grip and aerodynamic grip, right? Um, mechanical grip, I think, is a lot more straightforward for uh, most of us. You know, you can make adjustments to your suspension, um, whether it's the anti-roll bars, the spring stiffness, the dampers, that kind of thing, and affect the um, the quality of the mechanical grip that you have for particular corners and particular tracks. I think most of us um, understand the ideas behind mechanical grip a little bit better. Aerodynamic grip, on the other hand, is a bit more of an elusive concept, and uh, and I think it's why we need to talk about it now. Um, so, when we talk about aerodynamic grip, what we're really talking about is the amount of downforce generated by the car and by the setup that you choose for that car. Okay. Now, every corner that you go through is going to be using a combination of mechanical grip and aerodynamic grip, but that uh, they are not equal, right? Um, some corners are going to be more heavily influenced by mechanical grip. Some will be more heavily influenced by aerodynamic grip, and some of them will be um, a fairly close balance between the two, right? Um, if you think about just a very straightforward uh, garden variety hairpin uh, that you're going to drop down into first gear and take at a very relatively slow speed, uh, the importance of mechanical grip is going to be dominant there, right? Whereas if you uh, get into a little bit faster corner, and I'm ballparking here, but uh, for in the Lambo, for instance, let's say when I get to um, you know, really high second gear and into low third gear, then maybe the influence of the mechanical grip and the aerodynamic grip are a lot more balanced, you know, where they're both playing a very significant role in how the car handles that, uh, that particular corner. But then once you get up into third gear corners uh, in the Lamborghini, then um, the influence of aerodynamic grip becomes the dominant factor. And the faster you go, the uh, the more important that aerodynamic grip becomes uh, for the car in that particular corner. So um, that is uh, that's what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about faster corners where how the car behaves is heavily dependent upon the aerodynamic balance of the car. Okay. Um, fundamentally, that is the point of this video. So I'm on the uh, I'm on the arrow page here in ACC right now um, in the Lamborghini, 
and I want to talk a little bit about what we have the ability to control and um, and how everything is affected by that because ultimately that's how we're going to get to the point that I want to make from this video if you look down at the bottom of the screen you see where it says um, uh, front arrow variation right every car in ACC has this the numbers are going to change from car to car they're they're not all identical so um, so take what uh, what I'm saying from this point out as specific to the uh, the Lamborghini uh, but I'm using it to make the general broader point so right now you can see that I have the car set up in uh, with a front ver arrow variation of zero percent right um, and what does that mean that's what we're that's what we're going to be getting at um, downforce um, is supplied in a GT3 car primarily by two factors the rear wing right and the ground effects okay now I'm not overly concerned with the rear wing in this video because it's um, it doesn't play as much of a role in in what I'm going to be talking about the ground effects however are the really big issue that uh, that we're going to be discussing and I don't want to get too deep into the woods on aerodynamic uh, physics and uh, the Venturi effect and all of those uh, particulars. Um, I don't think we need to for the purpose of this video. And if we got too deep, we'd we'd quickly run into where my brain power runs out anyway. Uh, but I <clears throat> I encourage you that. Um, um, that if you're more interested in this go look on some of that more specific stuff and learn how air actually flows around the car and how different changes to the setup can affect how that um, that air flows uh, thereby impacting how the car performs right it's all really good information but for our purposes um, what it what's important to understand is that air is flowing underneath the car and because of the way the car is designed, it creates a downforce by pulling the car down to the ground, right? Where the rear wing pushes the car down, ground effects pull the car down, okay? Um, and when we're talking about the front arrow variation, what we're talking about is if you think of that uh, that downforce that's being pulled, right? So if you think of that pull force that's acting on the car, um, imagine that it has a center of gravity to it, okay? Um, a center of force, if you will. Because although there is downforce being created um, underneath the car and pulling the entire car down, it does not mean that that force is equally generated from the front to the back of the car because it's not right it has a center of force and <clears throat> when we're talking about the front arrow variation in ACC that center of force is fundamentally what we're talking about right um, and right now I have this car set up so that the center of force is essentially right in the middle of the car not uh, not leaning one way towards the front or towards the back right so when you're looking at the front arrow variation in ACC understand that when you're making changes that affect the front arrow variation what you're really doing is you're moving the center of force of the ground effects either forward or backward right so just uh, just based on what we have here, um, I can raise the ride height, right? And I can move the uh, the center of force significantly towards the front. I can also go the other direction. So right now I have uh, my ride height set equally um, and all the way at the bottom, right? Um, but if I take off all the rear wing I have, that also moves it towards the front okay um, if I want to go completely the other direction for some reason I can raise the front ride height add max wing and I can move that center of force towards the rear of the car okay uh, 
Um, as you know, the changes you make to the ride height and the rear wing significantly affect how the car handles when you're out on track, right? So if I if I chose a setup that had a maximum amount of rake and zero wing, I'm now at a plus almost 12% um, aero variation, right? And you should know from your own experiences that that car will be completely undrivable. Okay, the 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 back end is going to be extremely light and it's going to come right out from under you as soon as you try to take any kind of turn at all. Um, why is that? Okay, is it because we have changed the ride height and added so much rake that the weight of the car has now shifted forward? Okay, ask that question. Is that the case? And the answer is no, not really. Does it adjust the weight a little bit? Sure. But think about it uh, from this perspective. The maximum amount of change that I can make in the Lamborghini, both front and rear, is right around 30 millimeters. Okay, 25 in the front, 35 in the back. I can't change the ride height any more than that. Okay. Now, for you, my fellow Americans out there who know jack shit about the metric system, that's slightly more than an inch, okay? So, just by raising the rear of the car slightly more than an inch, I have now made it undrivable, okay? If, if I don't have any wing on there. Frankly, even if I put max wing in there, um, I think we both agree that uh, you may be able to get around the track in it, but you're not going to be fast because the car is going to be uh, so unstable. Now, the reason that this is important is to is so that you understand in your head that when we say that, uh, that GT3 cars are pinch, pitch sensitive, this is what we're talking about. Because you don't have to change the ride height or the rake a full 30 millimeters or a full inch in order to get a significant difference in how the car performs, right? You only have to change it a couple of millimeters in order to significantly impact whether or not that, uh, that back end stays connected to the road or becomes very light on you and starts moving around, okay? And that is the point I want to make when I go over this arrow page, right? that the the more you shift the aero balance the center of force towards the front of the car by making adjustments to the rake the more difficult it becomes to control the back end of the car okay so now when we're looking at um the setup in the aero page and let me go back to to a 0% uh, variation. What we're talking about is the, um, the state of the car when it is in a stable position. So either at rest or coasting, okay? So when we are in a coasting platform, the car is at its most stable and that is where we would, uh, we would expect a 0% front arrow variation. We are rarely in a coasting position though, right? We spend the vast majority of our time either accelerating or braking. And for our purposes, it is under braking that we're concerned with, okay? And in particular, we're concerned about braking in high speed corners. Think about, go back to our example of a rudimentary hairpin, for instance, right? Let's say that, um, that I went to this maximum uh, front arrow variation, okay? Now, imagine you're trying to drive that car uh, into a braking zone, first in a hairpin 
right? Where you are going to uh, break predominantly in a straight line, right? And then as you get close um, to the corner and you start your turn in, you gradually start turning in as you start releasing the brake and you trail brake into the corner, okay? At that speed, the the aero the aerodynamic grip is not a significant factor in what's going on. So even though you have you have created what is essentially an undrivable car, <clears throat> it may feel a little bit loose to you, but you're probably not going to just immediately lose the back end, right? Um, in a in a corner that is that slow because the importance of the aerodynamics is very limited um, compared to other corners, right? Because that's more about mechanical grip. Now, imagine that you are going into 130R, right? Here at Suzuka, which you're going to take in at least fifth gear. Some cars, you might uh, be in sixth gear, okay? <clears throat> you don't even hit the brakes. You just, at some point before the corner, you lift off the gas in order to coast through 130R. The back end is absolutely going to come right around on you, and you're never going to be able to get through the corner with that setup. Why? Because that corner is so fast that the aerodynamic grip is the single most important thing that you're dealing with. And if you have shoved the balance of the aerodynamics that far forward, it's not going to be able to handle a corner at 130R no matter what you do, okay? <clears throat> okay, so what you need to realize from all of this is that what you do as a driver also impacts that front uh, front arrow variation, okay? So in the same way that you can increase the rake of the car by two, four, you know, six millimeters to substantially change the characteristics of how the car performs, you are doing the exact same thing every time you go on the brakes, right? Because when you hit the brakes, you know that the uh, the balance of the car shifts forward. And it's not just the weight shift. It is the front arrow variation that is shifting forward at the same time. So every time you come into a high speed corner and you go onto the brakes, you are shifting the arrow variation to the forward uh, to the front at a point when the car is heavily impacted by the aerodynamic balance, okay? That is the key takeaway that I want you to understand when we start talking about high-speed corners because your skill level on the brakes will largely determine both what you can even attempt to do going into high-speed corners and how successful you will be through them, right? There are there are any number of things that I could point to that make an alien as fast as they are, okay? Why is it that they can come out to Suzuka and turn a hot lap that's in the 158s, right? When we amateurs will struggle to get in the low twos, right? What what are the skills necessary to bridge that gap, make that leap? And what I'm telling you is is that one of the big ones that uh, that you may never have considered before is your ability to control the platform, the aerodynamic platform of the car going into high-speed corners, okay? If you want to get to the point, whatever your goal is, you know, if you want to get to the point where you can start 
running lap times that are getting close or or even competing with the true aliens in ACC, you are going to have to learn how to manage the aerodynamic platform of the car on the fly. Not just here in the setup screen, but while you're driving around a track and specific individual corners. Okay? Um, that has a huge effect on what you can accomplish throughout Sector 1 here at Suzuka. Think of Silverstone, right? Everything from Turn 1 all the way through Stowe is all a high-speed corner that will be substantially impacted by what you do with the aero balance on the entry to your corner. Because if you are not subtle enough on the brakes to be able to manage that balance, you will increase the front arrow variation farther than you want to and create a car that no longer has the aerodynamic capabilities to do what you want to do. Okay? You have to learn to be able to use inputs primarily through the brake that allow you to slow the car to the point that you want to while still maintaining a, a flat enough aerodynamic balance so that you can take full advantage of the aerodynamic capabilities of the car. So when I say, um, uh, when I say sometimes that we, uh, that we falsely, that we create a false limit of the car as amateurs, this is one of the areas that I'm talking about, okay? So think about it. You come up to uh, turn one here at Suzuka, and you slam on the brakes really hard to slow yourself and then jump back off of the brakes in order to actually make the first turn before you set up for turn two. What have you done? As soon as you slam on the brakes, the nose dives down, the back end comes up, and you've just destroyed the aerodynamics of the car. The, the balance that you set up in the, um, in the setup screen before you went on the track no longer exists. Instead, you have a car that the aero balance has substantially shifted forward, and um, unless you slow the car enough and then get back off of it, it's never going to be able to handle the corner. Okay? An alien, on the other hand, will be far more nuanced with what they're doing on the brakes so that they can carry more speed. They want to take full advantage of the aerodynamics that they set up in the setup screen. And in order to do that, they have to keep the car flatter. And that is where their skill on the brakes comes into play. They will modulate the brakes more. They will, um, you, you won't see them just going in and, and nose diving the car in. Instead, they are going to be much more gentle, nuanced, gradual. It could be a combination of, of any of those things in order to keep the car flat enough so that the aerodynamics exist to take the corner at a higher speed than you can and remain under control of it at the same time. Okay? That is the, the point of this video. I want you to understand that this dynamic exists and what you do as a driver substantially impacts how that dynamic changes throughout a corner because it is going to be crucial to our understanding of Sector 1 uh, here at Suzuka and other tracks when we get to those as well, like Silverstone. So, um, that's uh that's my lecture I suppose on this um and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off for a bit and then we'll go do the uh, Suzuka deep dive, but uh, if you have questions about this about this as a concept you know feel free to hit me up we can talk about them uh, further uh, but otherwise I'll see you at the deep dive take care guys we'll see you later.